Hi, welcome to Vita for Vitality again. This is Dr. Vita Talabi. Today, I'd like to talk to you about stress, fatigue, and adrenal issues. As you know, every day we have a variety of stressors that trigger our adrenal glands to produce stress hormones. Now, these could be mental, emotional issues. They could be physical issues like chronic pain. It could be lack of sleep, either that you don't fall asleep at night or you wake up in the middle of the night, or it could be just years of dieting. How would you know that you have adrenal issues? Well, if you have been gaining weight, if you have not been able to sleep well at night, again, that could be that you're not falling asleep well at the beginning of the night, or that you wake up in the middle of the night. If you have been experiencing depression, anxiety, if you have been getting very tired during the day, these are some of the signs that you have adrenal issues. Now, cortisol, our main stress hormone that I'd like to talk to you about today, has a circadian rhythm. It is high in the morning at about 6 a.m. and it starts tapering down and it is at its lowest at about 10 p.m. When our body has been exposed to long-term stressors, what happens is that this balance that I talked to you about, the circadian rhythm, can change. It can be, cortisol can be higher at some of these times. It could be lower. So I see that cortisol can go in two different, three different directions, really. Either it can go really, really high, and that tends to happen towards the beginning of this long-term stress that you may be experiencing. Cortisol levels are high, and it puts your body into insulin resistance, which is really the precursor to diabetes. So high cortisol and high insulin. When your body has been kind of experiencing this long-term stress, sometimes your cortisol levels go down, and this is because your adrenal glands are giving up and it's they're having a hard time producing the cortisol. Now, this can happen right away too. It doesn't have to be that your cortisol levels first go up and then go down. Really, your adrenal glands can go either way. Either they can go in that hyper state mode or this hypo phase where you uh, can go to complete adrenal fatigue and then you won't have that circadian rhythm anymore. Well, you might ask, what do I do if I have cortisol imbalance? Well, really, it really depends on what your cortisol picture really looks like. Now, you might have heard about adaptogenic herbs, which are the herbs that have a balancing effect on your adrenal glands, which means regardless of whether your cortisol levels are high or low, adaptogens bring those back into balance. Those are like herbs like um, licorice, ashwagandha, holy basil, maca, uh, these are some of the herbs and usually there's a combination product that you can get. I would recommend though that you don't just start taking adaptogenic herbs. That may address the problem but in reality cortisol issues can happen at two different levels. It could be that your adrenal glands are now not either producing enough cortisol or over producing cortisol, or it could be the triggering system, that other hormone that is released from your brain, from your pituitary gland, that triggers your adrenal glands to produce cortisol. The issue could be at that level, in which case the treatment would be very different. So what I recommend to most of my patients is that we need to really check your cortisol levels. There's a test, it's a salivary test where we measure your free cortisol levels in your saliva four times during the day. And that really gives us the best picture of what's going on. Is your cortisol level balanced? Does it have its circadian rhythm? Is it too high? Is it too low? Does it have enough of the precursor hormone DHEA available? So a lot of information can be deciphered from that test, which is a test that I would recommend. If you're interested about that test, you can email me and I can send you the kit and we can talk about the pricing and so on. But let's say in general though, there are certain signs and symptoms that indicate you have 
low adrenal function and there are some signs and symptoms that indicate you have high adrenal function now your adrenal function can really vary throughout the day but these are just some general rules to keep in mind so if you are fatigued throughout the day if you are either actually losing weight or gaining weight if you have insomnia where you actually wake up at the same time during the night like let's say you always wake up at 2 a.m that could be an indication that you have low adrenal function if your immune system is not working well you get sick all the time you have a lot of digestive issues and so on these are some of the indications uh, also uh, fatigue and brain fog uh, and depression and sadness, those are some of the other signs um, to keep in mind. So if you have a combination of these signs, that could be that perhaps your adrenals are not producing enough of the stress hormone cortisol. Now, if you are tired throughout the day, but you're also wired and very anxious, if you have a hard time falling asleep, but not necessarily waking up during the night, if you are constantly gaining weight, if you feel like your digestion again is not working really well, if you have a combination of these symptoms, this is generally a sign that your adrenal glands are producing too much cortisol. In general, there are certain things that you can do to keep your adrenal glands functioning well. Getting adequate sleep is really, really important, which means following that circadian rhythm, going to bed at about 10 to 11 p.m. and waking up around 6 a.m. would be preferable. That really follows your circadian rhythm and helps keep that cortisol balance. Avoiding any sort of stimulant, so caffeine is a stimulant of any kind, so avoiding caffeine, uh, caffeinated drinks as much as possible, nicotine, alcohol, sweeteners. Now I'm talking about natural sweeteners as well as artificial sweeteners. And last but not least, hydrogenated fats. If you can avoid most of these foods, um, uh, they're not all food, but if you can avoid most of these adrenal stimulants, you are really doing your adrenal glands a huge favor. Now the treatment would really vary depending on where you are with your cortisol levels. But in general, if you have signs and symptoms of low cortisol, as I just mentioned, you want to try to sleep more. You tend to require more sleep. So people generally on the days that they have off from work, it would be best if they slept in. The level of exercise that they do would be very different than somebody else that has high cortisol. You want to take it easy. You don't want to do something that is very active and really increases your heart rate. So uh, the rule of thumb is that if you do any sort of exercise routine and within the next 60 minutes after your exercise, you get really tired or you feel completely tired and exhausted the next day after you, uh, you exercise, that may indicate that that exercise level may be too much for you. So adjust your exercise depending on your level of fatigue. So you need to sleep more, you need to exercise uh, in moderation really. And the other thing that happens is that your ratio of potassium and sodium, I don't want to go into too much detail with that, is, is off as well. So in general, people who have adrenal fatigue or low cortisol production need more sodium. So they do better if they salt their food. So if you have hypertension, of course you don't want to do that. But in general, typically with people who have low cortisol, they also are very hypotensive. They are the ones that get dizzy when they stand up too quickly and they get very tired and agitated and irritated if they were to miss a meal. So in that case, you want to increase your salt intake and reduce your potassium intake. And potassium is generally high in fruits. So as a rule of thumb, when it comes to high cortisol levels, really you want to do high intensity interval training. If you're not used to that, what you need to do is start with just 10, 15 minutes of exercise four to five times a week and increase your intensity as soon as you your body is capable of doing it and increase the duration really if you do high intensity exercise for about 30 minutes five to six times a week and you know eventually get to that point you don't have to start out like that 
that would be great if you have high cortisol level. Um, and in terms of food, now we talked about the sodium potassium imbalance with low cortisol. Now the ratios are exactly the opposite when you have high cortisol levels. So with uh, high cortisol levels, people tend to have more potassium sorry, more sodium and low potassium. And so you don't want to salt your food in this case. Most of these patients tend to be more hypertensive. They tend to have higher cholesterol, higher triglycerides. So you want to make sure that you eat more fruits and vegetables and uh, really eliminate salt as much as possible. So to sum up, if you feel like you have any sort of adrenal issues going on, I would recommend that you consult your medical doctor or your naturopath in your area. You can also email me if you have any questions about the testing, if you're interested in that test. It's called Adrenal Stress Index, and it's a test that you actually do at home. So the kit is sent to you, and you will send the results to the lab. The information would come to me and I could discuss those results via Skype or, or a telephone call with you. Again, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, you can email me at dr.vita at vitaforvitality.com. See you next time.